Let's say that you are standing in front of a mountain. I'm going to represent that mountain by a line segment. Okay? Now, you're, you're standing in front of this mountain and let's say that you're here. And all of a sudden, a great idea comes to your mind. You say, if I figure out the height of this mountain, then I can use this measurement to figure out the radius of the earth. Well, it might sound like a crazy idea, but the best part about crazy ideas is that sometimes they end up working just fine. And this is the idea that a guy named Al-Biruni had when he lived his life in the 10th century. He was an Islamic scholar. He had many works in physics, astronomy, math. And today we will uh, carry out the derivation of his work where he found the radius of the earth and then calculated the circumference of the earth to a precision of 1%. So not a precision of, excuse me, to an error of 1%. Okay, so he was very precise. There was only 1% error. But how did he do it? Well, as I said, it all started by, by wanting to calculate the height of this mountain. Now, Biruni is here at point B. He has an astrolabe. And if you don't know, astrolabes are equipments that can be used to determine angles. So Biruni is using his astrolabe and looks to the top of the mountain. And by looking at it, he is able to determine this uh, angle, which he calls alpha. Then he goes in the same direction. So, it, so the direction that he is moving it will be away from the mountain. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. But let's say that he moves away from the mountain in the same direction, uh, in this direction. Okay, along this, uh, along this length, let's say, he goes... To and he travels through a distance of D to end up at point A. And again, he uses his astrolabe to figure out this angle, which he calls beta. And I just realized it is a silly idea to name alpha, B, beta, A. So why not I change the names of the points? Who will notice, right? Cool. This looks much better for me. Now, first of all, I want to uh, determine H in terms of uh, A, in terms of alpha, beta, and D. How do I do that? Well, I will have a dummy variable that I will get rid of. I don't know if you call these dummy variables, though. Yeah, we don't call them dummy variables. Excuse me. So this distance is X, the distance from this point to A, okay? And I'm going to say what is tangent of beta. Let's see. That will be, by definition, the opposite over the adjacent. And this is 90 degrees. I forget to tell you. I forgot to tell you that. So the opposite is H divided by X plus D. Cool, cool. What about tangent of alpha, you might be asking? It will be opposite over adjacent. So that is H over X. I want to find X and substitute it here. So I do that. I figure out that X is equal to H over tangent of alpha which I then take and substitute here. Well, what do I get then? I get that tangent of beta equals h over. We have h over tangent of alpha plus d. Cool. Now, why don't we just uh, equalize the denominators in the denominator? So we have, well, actually, you know what? I will do this step quickly. You need to check it for yourself. So we will get h tangent of alpha over h plus d tangent of alpha. Make sure that this transition makes sense to you. And I'm sure that you can figure it out. You will just multiply this by, we will just expand this one by tangent of alpha and do a little bit calculations, okay? It's easy. Then I want to solve for h, so let me multiply both sides by this business to get, to get h tangent of beta plus d tangent alpha tangent beta equaling h tangent alpha 
as I said, I am looking for h. So I subtract h tangent of beta from both sides. I have d tangent of alpha tangent of beta equaling, I factor out h, that is tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta. And don't worry, this is a positive value because alpha is, a, is an angle that is greater than beta and as uh, angles increases in the first quadrant for angles between 0 and 90 degrees, tangent increases as well. Hence, we can conclude that h equals tangent of alpha times tangent of beta all over tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta times d. And this is the formula that gives the height of the mountain to us. Now, cool, but how did Biruni figure out the radius of the earth from this, from this much information? Well, in fact, he did one more me measurement, which we will carry out on the new page. So the second piece of uh, uh, evidence, the second piece of, well, not evidence, let's call it observation that he made was to climb the mountain. He perhaps did it for fun, and when he ended up at the top of the mountain, he said, hey, I want to look at the horizon. And he was lucky that he could look above a, uh, he could look through a sea, I guess. That's what I heard. I'm not really sure though. So he looked to the horizon, which was above the sea, to get better results, obviously, to get to look as far as he, as he can, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. So he looked as far as he can, and he noted the angle of uh, his sight, how much his, uh, how much his sight needed to decrease from the Horizontal. Let me draw it with a picture. You will understand it better because I'm bad at explaining things without a drawing sometimes. So we have the earth. It is a sphere. I hope we can agree on that. And we have, I mean, even uh, Biruni agreed on this, okay? In the 10th century. So I think we can agree on it, at least for this video, all right? So we have this and it is going to be like so. We had the mountain. And Biruni, and this should be straight. What am I doing? This should be straight. Okay. So Biruni was standing at the top of this mountain and he looked as far as he can, which is this point. And he, using his astrolabe again, he was able to determine this angle of sight, which I will call theta. I don't know what he called it, but I call it theta. Now, I know that we will have the radius of the earth like this, and it will be perpendicular at this point. Because it is sort of tangent to the, uh, to the circumference. It is tangent to the circle. Tangent and radial directions are perpendicular. And then we will have R. And due to my bad drawing skills, it looks as if... Uh, it looks as if this is not a triangle, but it is a triangle, okay? This part is, is a straight line. Okay, now then, if this part is theta, then this part will be 90 minus theta. And then this part will be theta again, because this is 90, remember. So if I note cosine of theta, what do I get? I get that cosine of theta is equal to r over r plus h. I want to solve for r this time, because remember, I know h and I just measure theta. So I get r cosine of theta plus h cosine of theta equaling r. Which means that h cosine of theta equals r times 1 minus cosine of theta. So r, the radius of the earth, which we were able to figure out only you, by taking four measurements, r is equal to h cosine of theta Divide by 1 minus cosine of theta. And I know what h is in terms of the measured quantity. So let's just plug that in. We will have tangent alpha, tangent beta. Okay, got it. Tangent alpha, tangent beta over tangent alpha minus tangent beta. There is a minus sign here. Excuse me. Oops. Beta. All right. Then we have... The other factors, cosine of theta, 1 minus cosine of theta. These are all factors. 
And then we have D, the amount that Biruni displaced horizontally. So this formula gives you the radius of the earth. And using that, you can calculate the circumference of the earth. Okay, you would say, well, I guess you would say that the circumference is 2 pi r, right? Or you could do, you could carry out more sophisticated ways of doing it. And I'm not really sure what Biruni did afterwards. So if anyone knows, please add that in the comment section. But basically, this is what he did to calculate the, uh, to calculate the radius of the earth. And I want to mention one thing here. First of all, just look at how easy this is. I mean, this is the power of science, I think. Because we took four measurements and none of them were like incredibly hard measurements to take. We only measured the height and three angles. And using that, we were able to determine the radius of the earth. I will say it one more time. We took four measurements to determine the radius of the earth. And the math that we did is quite standard. You could, I mean, anyone could do this if they took a class on trigonometry, okay? So I think this really demonstrates the power of science when we combine it with imagination to come up with great experiments, we can achieve great things. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.